Israeli airstrikes on Friday hit more buildings in the southern suburbs of Lebanon's capital Beirut, setting off explosions in the area known as Dahia. In the second wave of strikes, two buildings in the Herat Reich and Hadith areas were struck, following Israeli warnings. In a warning notice on X, a spokesman for the Israeli military said that the airstrikes were targeting Hezbollah facilities and interests, without providing further details. There were no immediate reports of casualties. Such Israeli airstrikes have leveled hundreds of buildings and homes over the past eight weeks destroying thousands of housing units. The World Bank estimated that Lebanon has been hit by $8.5 billion in physical damages and economic losses from 13 months of Israel-Hezbollah war. Damages to physical infrastructure alone were valued at $3.4 billion, while economic losses totaled $5.1 billion, the World Bank said in a statement Thursday. Israel has also been striking deeper inside Lebanon since September as it escalates the war against Hezbollah. The U.S. has been trying to broker an end to the fighting between Israel and Hezbollah, which came as the 13-month Israel-Hamas war broadened in September into southern and eastern Lebanon as well as Beirut's southern suburbs. Israel forces invaded South Lebanon on October 1, causing widespread destruction in border villages but making little advances on the ground inside the country. Israeli forces and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah have been clashing since October 8, 2023, when Hezbollah began launching rockets across the border in support of its ally, Hamas, in Gaza. The conflict escalated beginning in mid-September. Israel has launched a widespread aerial bombardment of Lebanon and a ground invasion that it said is intended to push Hezbollah back from the border.
The Ukrainian Defense Forces operation in the Kursk region has been ongoing for 100 days. During this time, the enemy has shelled its own territory 11,578 times, citing the Operational Command North. According to the Ukrainian armed forces, by leveling their own settlements and killing their own citizens, the Russians have dropped 3,243 guided aerial bombs and 356 unguided aerial rockets on their own land. In addition, over the past 100 days, the Russians have dropped 2,462 explosive devices from drones and used 2,175 FPV drones. Meanwhile, Ukrainian forces have burned dozens of armored vehicles and destroyed hundreds of enemies on the Kursk front. The defense forces began the operation in the Kursk region at the beginning of August. Ukrainian troops took control of dozens of settlements and created a buffer zone in the border areas of the Russian Federation. The Russian army conducted a series of offensive actions to retake the territory. The Russian army has also engaged North Korean soldiers in battles in the Kursk region. According to the NYT, Russia has gathered 50,000 troops in the Kursk region, including North Korean soldiers, for an offensive. As President Volodymyr Zelensky explained, the Kursk operation was a preemptive move as there was information that the Russians were preparing an offensive on the Sumy region. Moscow's bombings on its own territory have seemingly intensified, with accidental bombs that have fallen on Russia and the occupied territories of Ukraine exacerbated by intentional attacks on Kyiv troops in Kursk. The Kremlin has previously admitted that its aircraft have mistakenly bombed territory under Russian control, with many of these instances taking place in the Belgorod region, which shared a border with Ukraine in the west of Russia. Between March and October, a total of 130 Soviet FAB aerial bombs have accidentally fallen on Russian land or occupied territory, according to calculations by Astra, a Russia-Ukraine war reporting telegram channel. But on top of this, Russia has fired glide bombs at Ukrainian troops near the border of Russia's western Kursk region. Russia previously fitted their FABs with the unified planning and gliding modules systems, which equip the bombs with wings and satellite guidance to enable the Russians to launch the bombs at Ukrainian targets directly from Russian territory. Bombs with an abnormal descent are not supposed to explode, left to be destroyed by explosive experts after the fact, but this is not always the case in reality. On May the 4th, during strikes on the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv, a Russian plane dropped a FAB 500 on Belgorod, which ended up injuring seven people and damaging 31 houses. Russia had started deploying modified Soviet-era FAB 500s with an attached wing and navigation kit earlier in 2023 as an alternative to dwindling precision-guided missiles. Military expert Ruslan Leviev said that although the glide bombs retrofitted guidance systems are unreliable, only a fraction of these bombs fail, so it doesn't affect the practical effectiveness of this weapon, no matter how cynical that may sound.